Well, good morning, Journey family, or afternoon, or evening, whenever it is that you're watching us. Welcome to another prayer talk. And um, looking forward to taking those walks, by the way, weather permitting, we're getting close. And so just happen to be sitting in another location here in the sanctuary. And it's one of my favorite. Journey by Grace's building is surrounded by windows and the views we get are spectacular. We get to watch the clouds roll in, the sun rise, the sun set, and all of God's creatures that surround us in the woods, uh, surrounding woods, just a wonderful uh, habitation of God's presence. So good news, lots of good news. You know, as crazy as things are, there is lots of good news. So back many months, we talked about the dream I had about God saying the era of the politicians is ending and the dawn of the reformers has begun. Wow, reformers are taken over. <laughs> That's so cool. And it's so needed and it's so necessary. And we're seeing so much of, of God unpackaging uh, what has been packaged by the enemy we are witnessing on a daily uh, event by daily events the bed sheets literally being taken off of the corrupt and what has been exposed uh, is shocking and horrifying and yet we say thanks be to god it continues to be exposed so the good news Reformers are rising, things are being exposed, and positions are being filled by moms and dads, men and women, pastors are standing in their pulpits and, and speaking forcibly and powerfully and scripturally and reminding people in the pews that our role as the ecclesia is to govern. We are a governing body of believers. We are not to sit back and let it all come, come apart. Um, we are to be involved, engaged, and supportive. That's why uh, I feel so strongly, and I believe so many of you do, that praying is the answer and participating is the outflow it's the it's the most common sense thing to do it's the obligation it's the responsibility that you and i have as born again christians to be involved in the process we have a responsibility i've been taking biblical citizenship classes for the second time now on monday nights and it just encourages me and refreshes my memory of our constitutional blessing and heritage as well as our biblical responsibilities as believers the two go hand in hand because God gave us as the United States a, a providential Constitution and God intended us as Americans to be involved in the governing of our land more importantly he really intended the church the true church and by that I mean, you must know there are false churches. There are plenty of false churches. They're in your neighborhoods. And there are plenty of true churches. What's the difference? One preaches a social gospel. The other preaches a biblical gospel. That's a message for another day. But I hope you're in a biblical, true church. You'll know, oh, you'll know, your spirit, you're your, your born again, the presence of Jesus in you will let you know. You know, perhaps God's been convicting you of that and because of uh, history, because of memories, because of heritage, because perhaps your grandma and grandpa, mom and dad were the patriarch and the matriarch of the church you're in. It's been a struggle for you to say, I'm in the wrong place. Let it go. Let it go. 
and get to that right place. The most important thing you can do is the right thing, the true thing. And let Holy Spirit lead you to do what's right and honest and just. These are exciting days. And the less baggage we carry, the further we can go. The more endurance we have. And we can take hills that we never thought we could climb. We could push into places that previously we wouldn't want to. So be encouraged. Good things are happening. And uh, we're winning. Why do I know that? <laughs> God never loses. Ever. And we are his sons and his daughters. We are on, on a winning side and in a winning family all the time. We win because all the time he wins. So be encouraged. All right, let's take these remaining moments and call upon the name of the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for calling us into a winning family with winning ideas, winning promises, and a winning today and tomorrow. And though the battles each day we are in are brutal, bloody, and sometimes we want to hide behind our door and close it and let everything happen outside. No, that is not your way. You call us out into engagement. You call us into communities, neighborhoods, school, education. You call us into economy. You call us into arts and entertainment. You call us into world governments. You call us into it. Heavenly Father, your calling is irrevocable. It is non-negotiable. And Father, we pray as the ecclesia, the governing, ruling body of Christ, continue to empower us, continue to improve us, and continue to make us into that weapon of righteousness in an unrighteous and unruly time. We want to be your weapons of righteousness, your arrows of righteousness out of the quiver of Lord Jesus himself as he takes battle after battle on for the sake of his church, his bride. We who are the bride of Christ are happy to be so, ready to do so. May our arrows be sharpened today by you, Holy Spirit, pointed in the direction that Jesus desires us to be sent. And once we are sent, may we have such a powerful cause and effect in every area of society that you take us. Blessed be your name, Almighty God. Blessed be your name. Heavenly Father, I pray for peace upon everyone's home that is listening. I pray for prosperity in their homes. I pray for protection over their homes, over their siblings, their loved ones, generations yet to come. I pray that you will use grandsons, granddaughters, and their sons and daughters for generations to come that will be the gatekeepers, the wall watchers, the guardians of future generations. I pray for multiplication in salvations. Save the unsaved of those homes and households to whom we are enjoying this prayer time with. Comfort the hearts of grieving mothers and fathers 
who have watched their loved ones pass on, struggling to know whether they were in the faith or not. Comfort their hearts. Give them a word from you so that peace will come for their remaining days on earth. Strengthen the true church, O oh God, we pray. Strengthen her, we ask today. And Father, once again, I ask that you give the true church the gift of miracles, signs, and wonders, the gift of healing, so that we can place our hands on the sick and they will recover immediately, miraculously, not for the sake of or the glory of a local church building, but for the glory of the Father of lights, for the glory of God himself. And I ask all of this in the amazing, wonderful name of Jesus, how we love you, how we praise you and thank you and look forward to seeing you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, God bless you. God strengthen you. God's peace be with you. Continue praying and pray more. Why? Because prayer changes things. Then pray until something changes. God bless you and bye for now.